So guys, here we are just days into the new year and already we've got a massive amount of new information about Apple's AR VR headset, which is due to be released later this year. The lenses are going to auto adjust to your pupils to give you the widest possible field of vision. And they're going to use something called the pancake technology on the lens. Now, it's a much more expensive technology than the other option, which is called the Frenzel technique. But the benefit of using the pancake technology is that the lenses are going to be much, much thinner, much lighter. And this headset's all about keeping the weight down. That's what Apple engineers have been working super hard on. So the lenses are going to be super, super thin, but don't worry. If you're a prescription lens wearer, you'll be able to attach your prescription lenses to the front of the Apple AR VR headset via magnetic technique that the engineers are currently working on. The information are one of a very few number of people that have physically seen Apple's AR VR headset, and they did confirm in the report, yes, they are going to look like the ski goggles, which is kind of what we'd all anticipated they were going to look like. But one of the new details was that there's going to be a digital crown or something very similar to the digital crown that you get on the AirPod Pro Max to one side of the headset. And the idea of that is by simply twisting the digital crown, it's gonna let you switch quickly and seamlessly between virtual reality and the real world. Something else that was confirmed in the report also is the power source. There's been a lot of conjecture about the power source. Well, it's no longer gonna be anything to do with a headband. It now seems that it's gonna be worn around the waist, a battery pack, which will give you around about two hours of use, but can be switched out during play. It's gonna be connected to the headset via something very similar to a MagSafe connector. Let's talk displays now, because in this report from the information, there was a few more details given to us about those as well. On the front of the goggles is gonna be a panel coming from LG and people will be able to see through to see your face expressions. But on the inside, those micro OLED panels are coming from Sony. They're 4K panels, as I say, being sourced from Sony. And then there's gonna be dozens of cameras and they're gonna be responsible for monitoring everything from facial expressions to body movements, leg movements, and finger movements. And talking of finger and arm movements, there is some talk now that's gonna be almost like a thimble kind of input control so they can micro monitor the very finest detail and movements of your fingers and hands. So a really, really immersive experience. LiDAR scanners are gonna be included in the headset so you'll be able to measure maps and surfaces in 3D. And the headset's gonna use the H2 chip, which means that the audio is gonna be coming to the headset via whichever the latest version is of AirPod Pro. Processor-wise, you'll get two chips in the headset, both five nanometer process, which means it's missing out on the latest technology being developed by TSMC at the moment. And those three nanometer chips are more than likely gonna make their appearance in Apple products towards the end of the year. And the name towards the end of the year also was changed from Reality OS to XR OS. Extended Reality is what XR stands for, which virtually confirms for certain that it's gonna be both augmented and virtual reality when the headset finally comes to market, which hopefully, hopefully, according to Ming-Chi Kuo, should be the back end of this year. The headset was actually put into production as early as the beginning of last year, believe it or not. Over in Taiwan at Petrogen, they were doing tests over there on all sorts of prototypes. It's gone as far as the really important EVT, the engineering valuation test. And it's that test that confirms that the prototypes are scalable through to mass production. And in those tweets from Ming-Chi Kuo that I mentioned just a moment ago, he is still convinced that the headset will be coming out later this year and the reasons for the delays are down to software issues but hopefully apple are getting on top of those now the price is still going to be around about three thousand dollars but considering all the groundbreaking technology that's in this headset that's not really surprising and then apple's plan is still that just a couple of years after the headset comes to market the Apple smart glasses will come to market and they will resemble far more a normal pair of sunglasses. But just before finishing, <laughs> there's one story that Apple might not be too keen to learn about. CNBC reported that there was a 2% drop in sales of ARB headsets last year due to the weak economy and high inflation. With this headset being priced at such a premium price point, that could spell trouble for the headset in its first year. But guys, what about you? Are you really looking forward to getting your hands on this headset. Have you been waiting for Apple's AR VR headset for years and years now? And if so, which features are you really looking forward to using the most? There were so many new details in that report that came out yesterday that I just wanted to get them out to you as quickly as possible to make sure you knew what was going on. I'll be back very soon with the next video, so make sure you get subscribed. And guys, I'll see you on the next one.